Hello and welcome to Dr. Levin's Music Lab with me, Fake Dr. Levin. It's been a while since I've been able to put out a video because I've been on tour, but now I'm back. I've moved into a new space and I've got new musical experiments in the works. And today we're going to talk about a tapping lick that will help you better understand the makeup and uses of seventh arpeggios. So, in a Let's start with C major 7. So here's the tapping lick for C major 7. What this uh, lick utilizes is it takes the four notes of the 7th chord, the 1, the 3, the 5, and the 7, and places them, puts them in a, in a shape that's really easy to play fast and is um, a really beautiful and fluid tapping lick. And in this case, it starts on the 7th, which is B for C major 7. The 7th is B, then C, the root, the 3rd, E, G, the 5th, then you tap the 7th. So on the low E string, you play the 7th and the root, then you play the 3rd and the 5th on the A string, and then you tap the 7th again on the a string up high. And this exact same shape can be put in three octaves. You can put it here, here, and here. So it doesn't change at all as you move up the neck, uh, which is part of why I like it so much. The reason why it's a good, also a good tool for better understanding the seventh chords is because you can clearly visualize the differences between each type of 7th chord. For example, we have C major 7. There's a half step between the 7th and the root. And then the major 3rd and the 5th. It's right there. Now if we make this a dominant 7th chord, the difference between a dominant 7th chord and a major 7th chord is that in a dominant 7th chord you flat the 7th. So here's the 7th in major 7. Here's the seventh in a dominant seven. We flat it, put it down one fret. So here's a dominant seventh chord. And remember, we're going to tap now the flat seven. So you can clearly visualize that the, di the one difference between a major seven and a dominant seven is that seventh goes down a half step in the dominant seven. And what if we want to make it minor seven? Well, for m the difference between major seven and minor seven is you have a flatted seventh and a flatted third. So first, there's major seven, now let's flat the seven, which makes dominant seven, but now let's flat the third and it'll become minor seven. So now we've got a minor seven arpeggio. And it's just a really simple like moving of your finger just this much and it's, it feels like the same lick, so... No problem. So now we've got this minor 7. What if we want to make it a minor 7 flat 5? Well, all you have to do to go from minor 7 to minor 7 flat 5 is flat the 5th. There's the 5, the natural 5, now here's the flat 5. flat 7, as you did in the dominant 7 and the minor 7, but the difference is now you flat the 5, so. So it's a really great, easy to play, I mean it's not super easy, you have to practice it slowly and build it up, but it's simple, it's easy to remember, easy to understand, way to play the 7th arpeggios and I feel like it's a really useful tool for understanding the differences between them. So included in a printout below, I have each arpeggio just in one octave, major seven, uh, minor, or major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, and minor seven flat five. And then I have them each in three octaves as I showed earlier. So work on these licks slowly with the metronome at this tempo.
tempo where you can really be rhythmically precise. Da, 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 da. And then eventually from practicing it very precisely, you'll be able to play it fast. But the speed comes as a result of being very accurate when you practice. You don't need to practice this fast for it to become fast. You need to practice it accurately for it to become fast. And eventually the speed will catch up with or you'll catch up with the speed or whatever. You'll play fast if you play it accurate. Uh, but the main point is use a metronome, play it in time, play it clean. And there's lots of ways to use these uh, licks, as, these uh, arpeggios as the core to other licks. And you can do stuff like... And what I did there is I took these arpeggios and then I started adding other notes to them. Like, for example, instead of the 7th being tapped, I'd tap the 6th, and then I'd pull off and then tap the 7th, and so you can go like, and what I did here is, I did the 3rd, then the root, then the 7th, and experiment with tapping different high notes while you do this same bass arpeggios. See what you can come up with. So I hope that you enjoyed these arpeggios. I hope you got a better understanding for what makes up a seventh chord and the differences between each one. And I hope that these licks inspire you to do things that are good. <laughs> <laughs>